Hi ladies, welcome to Step Up. Today we have a very, very serious topic that I don't want you to miss. With me in the studio is Amanda LaRue. We're going to talk about abuse. Don't go away, call your friend, get the double cheesecake because we are right back. Hi ladies, welcome back to another episode of Step Up. I'm very excited because my friend is in town, Pastor Amanda LaRue, who was on Step Up a couple of weeks ago. Good day. Good day, Chantal. It's wonderful to be with you. Listen, let me tell you something. Never did I think when you came to Cape Town this time, you're going to be on Step Up. I just thought last night, why am I not calling you? <laughs> and what a surprise. I know. Thank you so much for coming and visiting us again. And the ladies in Africa, because we're sitting right here, but we're speaking to the continent of Africa. Is that just not a blessing? That is such a blessing mm. and a privilege I know. to speak to the ladies. I know. I feel exactly the same way. Mm. Today, ladies, we're going to talk about a very serious topic um, that I want Maybe you've never experienced this, but maybe you know someone that has experienced this topic, abuse, physical abuse, mental abuse, sexual abuse, verbal abuse. We are going to go right into the topic because I don't want you to miss this. And I really want us to focus on this because you know what? Sometimes you don't even know. Am I right, Amanda? Yeah. Sometimes you don't even know that you are in an abusive relationship. Sometimes we don't know. Yes. You don't know you're in an abusive relationship and you don't know what is abnormal because you grew up in a bloodline maybe or in a household where abuse was the normal. Was the norm. It was yeah. normal to be yeah. like that or yeah. to be in that environment. Yeah. We're going to literally go in, zoom in and allow women to see, you know what, this is not normal. This yes. is abnormal. Yes. So by starting, Amanda, what can it do to you as a woman? in abuse. Let's start there because we can start everywhere. It's such a huge big topic. I don't even know where to start. We have to start somewhere so let's start with or let's start with how do I know it's abuse? Chantal maybe I can share a little bit of mm. my life where I grew up in a household Please. that was really not a normal household. A broken family at the age of four and a half um, I was abused by one of the farmers on, on daddy's farm. Mm. And the reason why um, Satan got a foothold to, to harm me, to come and defile my purity as mm. a little girl was because of dad's brokenness. Wow. He was a generational alcoholist and um, most of the time somewhere drinking, mm. somewhere with girls. So daddy's and eye was not on, daddy's on the family. Daddy's eye was not there. Daddy did not watch over us as, as girls, as his, as, his, as his children. And Satan got the foothold through mm. one of the farmers, farm workers. And what happened there at the age of four and a half changed my mind as a little girl, changed the way the I thinking. thought, yeah, my thinking patterns. And... Um, the result of abuse, you know, the thing is the first time that that you are abused leads to perpetual abuse in your life. And it opens up just for more and more and more sexual abuse. I'm mm. talking about sexual abuse now. In this situation. And what happens, um, Chantal, is the levels of shame, the levels of guilt, the levels of condemnation that start to form around you, the fear, fear for people, mm. fear for men in, in, in my, in my in situation, yeah, in my case. And um, the shame, but the isolation and the loneliness mm. opens up little girls to actually accept later on wrong um, relationships wrong as relationship. well. Even wrong you, patterns in their life, wrong, behavioral patterns. Am I wrong right? behavioral patterns because, you know, as a small girl, your emotional boundaries are not set to deal with this um, influx of information that you get. 
what you experience in your body, mm -hmm. the result of what you experience in your body, it leads to um, abnormal behavior like, and, and I need to mention this today, because we found this such a huge issue in little girls and little boys' lives. Because I also want to mention what happened to me also happened to to little boys. Mm, okay, that's very true. it's not only for girls this this topic. Can but, I just say yes, this before yeah, you continue yeah, on that? Because yeah. the attack of the enemy is not focused on one gender. He wants to destroy all of us. That's his plan. He came to kill, to steal, and, and destroy. to destroy. Not just women men as well yeah. so we're not just talking about abuse today just yes we're talking this is a single woman program but it's yeah. also now open for everybody because abuse is to everybody that's right and the the thing with sexuality is god created it so pure and beautiful to become worship and the ideal circumstances in marriage yes in yes. a covenant yes to become worship unto him and satan hates that he hates god's patterns mm. he hates it when when purity is preserved when dads know how to protect the little girl's purity so so one of the big um results or fruits mm. of sexual abuse in a very young age is is addiction to masturbation mm. And it changes how, how, um, how children and girls, um, you know, use private time, for, for instance. So instead of building and yourself dreaming, up and, and, and dreaming, dreaming about your future. Yes, dreaming about your future, dreaming about a, even a future husband, your whole a, a mindset. mindset are absorbed in wrong mm. thinking patterns. And this is the thing that I found the most destructive about um, sexual abuse is the, the how it snatches away the innocence. That's the thing, that's the thing. How it snatches away the mm. dreams of a little girl, becoming a little princess one day, becoming, even being a daddy's princess, because the shame caused you to hide away. Mm. To, to sure. you understand? I and, understand that and, and this is, this is for me, one of the, when we, when we will talk about healing, one of the deepest dimensions where we need to, to, to bring healing to, um, to little girls. One of the things that, <laughs> you know, this topic, it, we will probably, we can stay on this, just on this one point for probably a month because there's so much depth into yeah. this. And the saddest thing about this whole, th about this topic, this, this point, this point, is that instead of me dreaming and, 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 and daydreaming about my future, daydreaming about having big, big plans, you are busy with things that the enemy brought on you yeah. that you had no time for. You didn't, even, you didn't even know it was there yeah. and a door was unlocked yeah. and something was open to you yeah. which was not part, yeah. which was never supposed to be there. Isn't yeah. that sad? A wrong door. A wrong and, door. And you know, the word of God says, Many our, may our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. Amen. God's idea about daughters, in the message translation, the word says, our daughters as shapely and bright as fields of flower beads. Fields of flower. flower beads. And, and, and God, wildflowers is the other translation there. And God's idea for us was to be, to, to, to grow up as little girls, to become a strong pillar mm. in the community, a strong pillar in the house of God. And this is what sexual abuse and uh, steals away from you. Yes. It's this, yes. this beautiful pillar that God wants you to grow up. Because what happens is once you've now been in an abusive relationship or you've been abused in yeah. your past, what happens, ladies, is the fact that so much is being stolen from you. Yeah. This is the problem. Your your strength is stolen. Yeah. Isn't that true? Your virtue is stolen. Your virtue is stolen. Yeah. You know, power out of you was stolen. Yes. Somebody that you you who you really were, the enemy came and he abrupt 
that plan. Yeah. That's what he did. Yeah. He just came to destroy that. Yeah. But thank God for the blood of Jesus because he heals and he restores. Before we close in this session, I just want us to quickly touch on what it can do and what scars can abuse leave behind, Amanda. The first thing that abuse does to you is to silence you. God made us to be a voice. His voice. Amen. His the, voice. His voice. So with abuse comes things like, if you talk, I will hurt you. So to silence your voice, to bring dimensions of, fa of, of failure. rejection, failure, unbelief, but the most of all, an unloving spirit. It isolates you from the true love of God. Mm -hmm. Protection in a household, the meaning of uh, the, the role of a dad was to portray father's heart. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. with abuse, you are isolated from true love, from real love. And, and the, the outflow is loneliness, isolation, rejection, That's guilt, condemnation, a, so, a, a low self-esteem. Um, you, because you can't dream with God, you can't dream. There's, there's nobody that guides you into godly dreams. Mm. You lose many times your redemptive purpose, why you were created, and the prophetic voice of God in your life. Sure. Ladies, we're talking about abuse and maybe you are in an abusive relationship today and you don't know what. You know what? We have all the contact details that you can make contact with us. If this is you and you say, I need to get out of this yesterday. I didn't know how. I don't know what to do. You have all the contact details of us right at the end of the program. Um, we're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. Lord Jesus, thank you for creating me in your image. Thank you that in you I lack absolutely nothing. Thank you that according to your word, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Thank you for choosing me for such a time as this, so that your glory and presence can be manifested in and through my life right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that I know I am never alone because you live in me and because of who you are, King Jesus, I will never walk in defeat. I've been set free from all lies of the enemy and I will not die before my time, but I will love to declare the glory of the Lord in this lifetime and in this land. Today I choose life because I choose truth. Jesus Christ is my truth. As a daughter of destiny, I will step up and step out in faith into the great plan God has for me. I have the DNA of my Heavenly Father. That is why everywhere I go, godly change is made through the power of the Holy Spirit and the living Word of God, which is on the inside of me. This gospel of Jesus Christ will be ministered through me as long as I have breath. It was for this purpose I was born. I declare my life is purposeful. My dreams are God's desire for my life and my hope is charged with faith. As a daughter of promise, I will run my race with endurance. I will cry on my knees. I will battle through in prayer and I will rise up in victory on my feet because Jesus Christ is the lifter of my head. Amen. Hi ladies, welcome back to Step Up. And as you know, we are having a very, very serious topic. And if you are in an, in an abusive relationship or you have a friend that you know is in one of these relationships, there's contact details at the bottom of the screen. Please make contact as soon as you possibly can. And with me again, it's of course one of my Oh, do I say it's not even friendship, it's sistership. Yes, <laughs> we are word. sisters. <laughs> There's a new word, sistership. Um, Amanda LaRue, I'm very honored to have you back on the program. And you are you are a part of Step Up. That's what it is. Absolutely. Mm. Together we will step up. Together we, we will step, step up. up. Amen. And you know what is so amazing when God joins you with other women that sing 
the same song, that pray the same prayer, that wants the same thing. You know what? We become a voice within the nation. Your voice and my voice makes harmony and God yes. adds more voices wherever we come from. Because Amanda does not stay in Cape Town, so she travels. And that's why when she's in Cape Town, I have to get her. <laughs> Absolutely. And but it's we are on the phone way. every single day. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Talking together, mm, praying together, yes. praying for the girls on the continent. Yes, yes, that's what we do. Yes. Ladies, we're talking about abuse, verbal abuse, physical abuse, sexual abuse, emotional abuse. And Amanda, Amanda we spoke about, you know, how do I know the scars that leaves behind? And just before we continue, you said you just wanted to, to, make, to give the scripture again. Yes. Um, it is Psalm 144 verse 12 that says, May our daughters be like graceful pillars carved to beautify a palace. And the word palace... Or oh, it's also translated as a temple. Mm. And then in the MSG translation, it says, Our daughters are shapely and bright as fields of wildflowers. Mm. Wow. And it gives such a picture of innocence, of beauty, yeah. of color. The thing that color. abuse also do, it strips you from the beautiful colors of life. And... Life becomes white and black. It becomes grey, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can later on not see the beautiful um, colours of life around you and how God created your personality, your character, your gifts to be colourful in the communities, colourful in your families. Amen. And to bring light because God's love is light. Amen. And by shunning true love in your life, you actually shun. You, 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 there's uh, a glow. Yeah, you there's glow. a glow. You will shine. But by taking that, you become a, a, a dim light. Mm. Your light can't shine the way we were created to be. Something that Amanda said earlier was very important for me, and it's very true. And I know out of the conversation, we get you get something that I don't get. But one of the things that stood out for me was how lonely you become through yes. abuse, how you, yes. you pull away from society, yes. how you pull away from people that love you and yes. people that care for you, yes. and how that yes. pulling away can affect you right to the end if you don't get help, number one, if you don't find Jesus, yeah. because Jesus is the restorer yes. of life, and we will get to that. Yes. But what I want to ask now is, Amanda, what is the signs? What if I have a friend what is it that I need to look for to see the signs of abuse? What is the signs? One of the signs um, is not only things like depression mm -hmm. and a negative way of speaking, but for me, a, the self-esteem that changed, the way we dress. Um, many women that came from abusive relationships or were abused as, as little girls um, put on weight. Mm. And the reason why is to, to build like a little wall around them. Wow. And one of the, the, the giants that I had to conquer was being overweight. I would lose weight, um, Chantal, but then at the stage I would start to think I need to gain a bit of weight. And it's just a way to hide yourself from more abuse because, you know, wow. God created us. He, he, he says in Psalm 144, we are graceful pillars. And, and I studied this word when I started the journey. I studied the word graceful pillar and I discovered that the pillar that the word is speaking about here, these pillars were not empty. It was filled up with scrolls of scripture. Wow. So, so what abuse does is you become hollow, you become empty, empty. you feel empty. And, and you shy away from the word of God because every time when you read the word, you feel guilty, you feel, feel condemned because you, do, you don't actually know how to get to the love behind the word. And the other thing it's, that you do is yeah. abuse is so demonic. Let me put it yeah. like that. You, the enemy wants you to know you should not speak yeah. because you are the cause. That's it. Is that not true? Yeah, that's true. Psalm, 100, uh, Psalm 68 verse 11 says, the Lord gives the word of power. The women who bear and publish the news are a great host. God created us as women to be a voice, to be carriers of the Amen. word, to proclaim the word, to 
take the word and the truth to not only your own family, but to your community, to your nation. And what abuse does, it empties you. It, it just brings that darkness of the lies and actually layer upon layer, layer of, of lies. lies. And, and the way to deal, I've discovered, is to, to, to come to a place where we make a decision that, and, and to say, I am not a victim. Amen. I will not be a victim. One day, I one will, day further. I will uh, uh, um, heal myself by speaking the word of God, by speaking the truth the over truth. every lie. I will fill my pillar. The pillar that God made me to be with the word of God, with his Amen. truth. You know, Psalm 139 speaks of things like, yes. you were wonderfully, fearfully, fearfully made. made. I knew you. I formed you. I have knitted you. And to bring the truth, to pray Psalm 139 over yourself daily. This is what I did. I started to reprogram my mind, the way of thinking. my way of thinking with the truth. I just want to say something. You know what? Many years ago, I was in, in a relationship. Now, Amanda, listen to this. I was living in the, in, in, in the UK for a while because you know what? We all wanted to travel and go here and work in a hotel and I did all of that. After when I turned, you know, just turned 21, I wanted to travel and my parents allowed me to go. And then I met a guy and then um, in the UK, which was my friend, but it ended up being a boyfriend. Yeah. But never did I know I was in an abusive relationship, a verbal abusive relationship. Yeah. Yeah. How, what did he do? He always told me how bad I did things. And you know what? I, I, not I couldn't leave him. I didn't want to leave him. You know why? Because I was alone in London. There was no one around me. It was just me in, that, in, in a foreign country. Yeah. I was nine hours flight away from my parents' home. Yeah. And sometimes you cannot leave that relationship because of where you are. And because of what you also start to believe who you are. You are not in your environment. We are embraced. You were, you were so blessed, Chantal, to come from a family where your dad yes. actually affirmed you. Yes. And now you were separated from that healthy environment. And the words, you know, in Proverbs 15, um, verse uh, um, 4, the word says, I want to read it. When you speak healing words, you offer others fruit from the tree of life. Amen. But unhealthy words, negative words, do not uh, uh, bolt. bolt. It crushes. It, you. it crushes the spirit and hopes. So your hopes start to change. Your spirit is wounded. And this is what, what, what the, the, the most um, severe thing about uh, a verbal abuse is it, it crushes the spirit and it crushes hopes. That's exactly the yeah. thing. You know what, ladies? Um, this is very serious. We, we, are, we are not even through our notes. Let me tell you something. <laughs> We're not even through our notes. But what we want to say is sometimes, Amanda, we are in, a, in an abusive relationship, yeah. in a relationship and there is, I hear it, there's a lot of women, they simply cannot get out. What would you say to them? It's a worse decision. If you don't decide to be brave, if you don't de decide to, to, to become courageous, by walking away, your life will end up sometimes, uh, you know, murder, yeah. self-murder or, or, or suicide, yeah, yeah. depression, darkness will become your clothes. It will become your light, a dark light. And, and this is something nobody can change but you. It's a worse decision mm. to make. So ladies, if you watching Step Up today and you say, I don't know Jesus Christ, so I don't know what to do. The first thing you do is you've got to make up your mind and get out. But I almost want to, uh, let me say this. I even want to say, go as far to say, Amanda, you cannot even make a decision if you don't have Christ in it. Absolutely. You know what? Because we are people, we are not sure about certain things. Yeah. Our surety yeah. is the word. The word is a surety. Our surety is Jesus Christ. Yes. So I want to say to any woman that are listening today to us, 
we are in agreement. We are sisters sitting here. We are talking about a place of knowing. Jesus Christ is the lifter up of your head. Yes. So right now where you are, I want to pray for you in a second. And I just want to speak life over you where you are right now. Woman on the continent of Africa, we release the favor of God, the truth of God, the revelation of God. If you've never opened a Bible, then we pray today in the name of Jesus Christ that you'll receive the word, the power of the word through this message today, wherever you are finding yourself in Jesus' name. May God enrich you with his power. May God enrich you with his word. May God enrich you with his truth today, wherever you are in Jesus' name. Amanda, thank you. We are going to continue on this topic. This is not the end. We are continuing on this topic next week because we haven't even touched. Number three. <laughs> thank you so much for coming today. May God bless you and we will continue. Thank you, Chantel. Bless you. Until next time, ladies, God bless you.